Right. So, welcome everybody. Um, how many of you were not at yesterday's talk by Oleg and Theodore and Alexander? Only a handful. Well, that's good because they talked about a lot of what I was going to talk about. And so I've rejigged this talk a bit and I'm going to talk about mostly some other stuff. Um, but if you want the full story about what's really, really, really sexy in 9.4 with JSON and some extra stuff that they provided, go and look at it because it's kind of going to rock your socks. I think it's a bit loud. Um, is yeah. it? All right, turn yeah. it down. Okay. Uh, the second one, this one. Uh, try this up. Just test it. One, two, three. Hello, one, two, three. One, two, three. Did you guys hear him? Yeah. Okay. That's okay. <coughs> so, um, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to review fairly quickly the, some, the history of, of uh, JSON in Postgres so that you, you get a bit of an idea of where we're coming from, and then we'll go through some of the features of, uh, that are in 9.4, um, but I'm not going to cover too much of the stuff about um, indexing because that was already covered by... by uh, uh, our Russian friends. So, basically we've got, uh, this is pretty much our, uh, our synopsis of the talk. Um, so what is JSON? Does anybody, how many people don't know what JSON is or have a reasonable understanding? Pretty much everybody does, okay. So it's lightweight, it's standardised, everybody's using it. It's, it's the, it's the, uh, it's the flavor du jour. It's pretty much pushing XML um, into the backwaters. It looks kind of like this. And you only have these types. There are no extensions. There are no date time types. Um, there have been proposals to extend it. Um, but at the moment, we are just sticking with the actual standard for um, for JavaScript, those standards that were on the previous slide. One of the things to notice about this is that it's not, it doesn't look like a database table or even a bunch of tables. It look, it's very irregular and that's, that's a frequent characteristic of JSON. And some of the facilities that we provided in 9.4 are going to help you to construct irregular JSON from the regular database tables because that's what the clients uh, are often want. Okay, so why use it? Well, everybody is, everybody's used to it, um, and it just kind of works. Why not use it? Well, there are some downsides, and the downsides are that um, it's a bit verbose. Field names are often repeated, um, so uh, you get uh, it, it's not as uh, not as compressed as it might be. It's not terribly suitable for huge objects, and it's not quite type rich enough. Some people prefer YAML because it uses less quotes. Um, I think that's a battle that's just been lost. Um, okay, so before 9.2, we didn't have anything. And Robert, who's just walked in, uh, kicked up a fuss and said, we're not going to go yet another release. So just before 9.2 pretty much closed itself to features, he quickly came out with uh, quite a useful implementation of uh, a JSON type with a uh, nice validating parser and uh, this, is this is what it was, was like uh, and it was and then I added on some stuff to turn non-JSON into JSON with these two functions and that's, that's what we had going into 9.2 uh, with 9.2 
and that was sort of the start of uh, of quite a long uh, uh, series of developments. So, what is missing? Well, an awful lot. Um, <clears throat> there, there were. Uh, Although we had these features for producing JSON out of the database, they were really quite uh, uh, quite rudimentary and not nearly uh, sufficient enough. There was no processing of JSON, no way of extracting data from JSON, no way of modifying JSON. And so you had to use things like PLV8 or PLPerl or something to do that work. So this was really just the beginning, but that's pretty characteristic of Postgres development, uh, Postgres, it, it, we tend to do stuff incrementally. So in 9.3, here are some things that happened. First, we, uh, we added some stuff to, produce, to make producing J JSON easier. We can, you can pass anything you like, any datum at all, to, to JSON, and it will turn it into JSON for you. And you can also... <coughs> Aggregate records as JSON, so this will basically give you an array of, ob of JSON objects, uh, and it's much faster than using the um, uh, this rather ugly expression that we you had to use in 9.2. Uh, we supported casts uh, to JSON, uh, which we hadn't done before, and so turning things like HStore into JSON turned it looked pretty ugly. One of the things that um, people have recently raised with me about that is that I made a decision, rightly or wrongly, uh, not to look up casts for built-ins on the basis that we actually knew how to turn built-ins into, into JSON already. Uh, this saves us looking up the, the, uh, uh, the cast in the common case. But the question that's been raised is, is it wise or necessary? Are we saving all that much? I actually don't know the answer to that. One counter case is where you actually want, if you're feeding the JSON to a uh, JavaScript processor, it wants date time values to be in ISO 8601 format. And our output isn't because it's missing the T between the date part and the timestamp part. <laughs> The workaround to that is to use two char, but that kind of gets ugly. So um, I'm I'm uh, I'm thinking of sending a, a note saying we should actually drop that uh, that behaviour and simply look up to see if there's a cast all the time. Okay. So, but we provided some casts for HStore, which was the particular case that gave people pain in 9.2. Uh, a couple of different things which uh, we had. Um, um, one which used a heuristic, because of course HStore values are just strings, uh, and one which, which, is, uh, which always uses strings. The cast is with the, with the strict one HStore to JSON. Okay, the other thing we did uh, was to rewrite the parser to use a recursive descent pattern. And the reason for that is that we can actually plug in event handlers, which meant that we could write a whole lot of uh, functions that could plug into the parser and use it without having to re-implement parsing all the time. It kind of works like an XML SACS parser. Um, we actually managed to keep it extremely fast. In fact, we, the parser, actually was faster than the one we had in 9.2 uh, after some optimization, and uh, e even though it had these extra facilities. And we used that extensively, as you'll see in 9.4. Um, we then added a whole bunch of processing functions, um, which I'm going to run through extremely quickly in a second. Um, which basically extract values and give you information about about uh, JSON. So here, here, here's kind of what they look like. You've got this uh, operator here that is um, that just fetches a, a single value, um, or you can fetch uh, 
an array element or object member as text with the, uh, with the extra arrow. Um, or you can fetch a whole path. Uh, there are also uh, functions that do similar things. And uh, we, can, uh, we can also turn JSON into records, a la HStore. Or to record sets, which HStore does not support. Okay, and we can turn JSON into key value pairs. So quite a lot of stuff. All of those functions use that parser API that I was talking about. They all supply hooks that go into the parser. So all, all of them parse with exactly the same uh, routines. Okay, we can get the keys. We can do uh, get the... Uh, elements from the array. There's an example here of, which I constructed last year called JSON type of. It's not the one that we've implemented in, in core in 9.4, which we'll get to in a second. It's not nearly as efficient, but it is an, a very simple example of how to use the 9.3 API. And there are lots and lots and lots and lots of examples in jsonfunks.c in the, in the core source code if you want to construct some extensions. Okay, so what's mis what was missing in 9.3? Well, efficiency. That's, the, that's really the big thing that was missing. Um, all of those functions that I just showed you reparse the JSON. So we're storing the JSON as text. That's fast. But we, if, if we have to reparse it and reparse it and reparse it over and over again, that's, uh, that's very inefficient. Uh, we also need some richer querying, which we've got in 9.4, we'll come to in a second. And we don't canonicalize the JSON at all. That means, for instance, that if you have <coughs> two objects which are semantically equivalent, but with the key order uh, re reversed, they won't, uh, there's, uh, we don't normalize that. White space, which is, in which is semantically insignificant, is not uh, dissolved away. Duplicate keys are not dissolved away. So there's a bunch of things that we don't do that we actually need. And there was no, basically no indexing support. We also need some richer utilities for building up JSON, for turning non-JSON into JSON. And finally, the big thing we need, and this is, this is kind of the the big thing that's left on the agenda is um, support for operations to alter JSON. So to delete a key or a value, to add some, uh, uh, something in the middle of it, to alter it in some way. OK. So here's what we got in, um, in 9.4. We got some new JSON creation functions, which we're going to look at in some detail in a second. We've got some new a couple of new utility functions. And the big thing we got was the JSONB type, which basically uh, has a bunch of efficient operations, or certainly more efficient than the operations that we had in 9.3. Uh, it's indexable, uh, and it has a canonical form. Yeah. Okay, the, we, ha, we, we provide a couple of ops classes for gin, constructing gin indexes on JSONB values. So that lets you take a random large JSON structure and pick any given key out of it and get values and index values? No, not quite. It, it's, uh, there's some stuff coming uh, from, uh, that, that is going to make things a lot easier to dig values from deeper down into uh, the JSON. But it, well, I mean, it gives you, it will, uh, you'll see. <clears throat> okay. But, and it's canonical. Let's say the keys in a, uh, in a JSON object are stored in a, in a uh, determinable uh, order, no matter what order they're in when they come in. Uh, the, each key appears only once. Uh, the last one in wins. Um, 
and all the white space is dissolved away. So there is a canonical format. And most, most importantly, we do not have to reparse the JSON to, to, to uh, run these operations. So even if we had no indexing support, those get operations that I showed you before on JSON B are much, much, much faster, like of the order of 100 times faster. OK, so here, uh, here are some of the, uh, the, uh, the, the utility things. We've got this thing where you can uh, turn a set of key value pairs into a JSON object. So uh, it, let's say you have a cities and, uh, with fields of name and population. You can produce a JSON object that, is, that has got all those values in it. Um, Um, J JSON AG is um, you can't you can't actually do this with JSON AG. JSON AG is actually yeah. Okay, these are th these uh, all of these things actually come from um, some work I did for uh, Postgres experts clients. Uh, and produced as extensions, so they're actually av av available for uh, 9.3. The reason we brought them in is that, that is that in order to implement them, we actually had to uh, use large copy large parts of the internal JSON code in order to implement them. And uh, so, what we really, you know, either to, to make that maintainable, either we would have had to expose those pieces, uh, the API for that, which I didn't really want to do, or we had to bring them in so that it could use them without exposing the, the API. So these things basically let you, um, these first two things are basically the core of this, of this uh, facility, which will let you build up arbitrary JSON. And you can pass any set of arguments to these things, and they will turn those into an object or an array. Now, build object will take the uh, the values pairwise. That is to say, it will consider the first one to be a key, the second one to be a value, the next one to be a key, the next one to be a value, and so on. Uh, build array will just take take them you know, element wise. Um, <coughs> these other ones are very similar to the HStore facility for turning text arrays into JSON. And in this case, it will turn text arrays into um, JSON objects. They are all returning JSON. Um, they are, no, these actually only return JSON. There are a couple of reasons for that. The first is, uh, but the, the main one is that we, is that by the time uh, I'd got that in and then we had JSON B in a state ready to be able to implement that, um, uh, representations of the firmest kind were made to me that I should stop doing any more work <laughs> <laughs> or else uh, JSON B would not be acceptable. <laughs> and um, so, so the, the workaround is that you can simply cast it to JSON B, but it's really I mean, these are principally intended for things that you would return to a client. You, you, could, now you, could, you could certainly uh, turn them into JSONB and store them in the database. Isn't there an implicit part between the two? Um, I'm not sure I understand. Yes, I think, uh, well, I don't, yes, I think there is. But um, yeah, so you would. Just, but uh, I'm not sure if it's implicit. But there is there is a cast. But um, yeah, you could. But at the moment, these functions just spit out JSON. If you want JSON B, you can you can cast it to JSON. I'm sorry. 
it will have to repass the data. That's, uh, that, that is true. Maybe we can, you know, maybe that's something we can look at doing in, um, in 9.5. Yes, but I mean, I guess the question is, what are you going to do with it? Yeah. I mean, like I said, you know, basically people sort of said, stop, and so I did. Um, and, you know, we were, in, as, as cool as JSONB is, we were lucky to get it in. So um, that, was, that was my primary goal. Um, I guess what I'm suggesting is that if you made these alternatives, well, it might not be on the impact on the project. Well, no, because turning JSONB into JSON isn't cost free either. It's not reparsing, but it's actually having to produce a string and it's actually and, and iterate over the JSONB structure. Uh, possibly, or yeah. Anyway, so here's here's kind of how they work. Um, just, these are some simple examples. So you can just basically pass in. Any bunch of arguments, you'll notice that there's, uh, you know, we've got uh, a number and a boolean there. Uh, it 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 doesn't. They don't have to be uh, regular at all. Um, here's how the JSON object thing works. It can take an, a, a one-dimensional array, in which case the elements are taken as key-value pairs pairwise. Or it can take a two-dimensional array, in which case the inner dimensions are key value, uh, and the, the, the inner dimension must be two. Or it can take separate arrays of keys and values. All of those queries produce this result. Again, that was pretty much uh, that's pretty much the way I think it works in HStore, and this and and this was. That was the inspiration for this set of the JSON object uh, functions. Okay, so here's a much more complex example of how we're going to build up a piece of JSON. Uh, so we're, we've got key of A, and then we've got an array with B, false C, and 99. And then the next thing, we've got D and an object which has got an inner key of E and an array and another key of F and uh, with, uh, and two JSON of R, which is uh, a, uh, a record from a, from a query. Now, the po point to note about this is that with JSON values in these functions, JSON values get part, simply get part on JSON B values for that matter, just get passed through. So uh, we don't, basically we, in the case of JSON, we just, we just stick the string in there. In the case of JSON B, we produce the JSON string and stick it in there. Uh, and we don't do any further quoting. So that means you can actually use these functions recursively with each other and produce valid JSON at the end. It, it does more or less what you expect. And again, another key of G, and, uh, and this time we've, got, we've produced an object with, uh, with JSON object. And we, and we produced this extremely irregular uh, piece of JSON down the bottom. Every, can everybody see that? Okay. Um, so given that, you can pretty much construct JSON in any shape you like. And... Um, We've got uh, 
a couple of clients who, who, who've uh, been using this and it's, it's, um, these, uh, these features have uh, pretty much enabled their uh, JSON-driven websites. So, the next uh, function, the, the next thing we have is JSON type of. Sometimes you have a piece of JSON and <coughs> you need to know what type of JSON thing, it, thing it is. A uh, uh, common case where you need this is if you want to cast the value to something. For instance, you want to, you want to make sure that it's a number before you cast it to a numeric. Because other, if you try casting something else to a numeric, you're going to get an exception. So you can do a case statement using JSON type of, and it's pretty efficient. It basically uh, just calls the lexical routine, gets the first element, and then throws the rest away and gives you back the result. It's, it's very fast. So that was written by um, Andrew Tipton. Uh, and it's, it's kind of useful, and it's much better than that thing. Now, notice here that we've got two null values. The quoted null is a JSON null. And that's uh, because a bare null is actually, bare literal null, is actually valid JSON. If you pass in a null JSON argument, an SQL null, then you will get back an SQL null because it's, because it's uh, uh, a strict function. So that's the difference between these two things. Okay, and then the last thing is the JSONB type. And the JSONB type uh, it uses the... 9.3 parsing routines. Um, it, it's very slightly stricter than the 9.3 parsing because in 9.3, for the plain JSON parsing, in nine, uh, because we basically decided we weren't going to check the validity of certain Unicode escapes in, uh, in the JSON. That's the only thing that, that gets through for JSON that doesn't get through for JSONB. <coughs> Apart from that, though, the fact that we... Did you have a question? Somebody there? Oh, no. The fact that we're using the same routines was actually kind of important to me, and I, uh, uh, I, uh, I wanted to be very certain that we were going to have these two types using the same parsing routines so that they they, we could not get the, uh, you know, what they would accept out of step. So uh, the representation actually goes through and, and uh, constructs a binary object which closely mirrors the, uh, the, uh, uh, the actual JSON syntax. So you have, you're going to have, you know, an array. It's, uh, 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 It'll say, here's an array, it's got this many elements, and then it'll, it'll, you'll have a sequence of element thingies inside it, and those in turn can be objects or, or what have you. So it's, it's very much like the JSON syntax. But the thing is that, of course, we're not actually reading it character by character any longer. <coughs> um, the parsing is actually pretty fast. Um, Oleg showed, I think, that it was running at about 140% of what it was to parse pure JSON on his uh, delicious bookmarks um, benchmark. Uh, that's not surprising uh, because the parsing for JSON use, basically doesn't use any of the hooks at all. All it does is it runs through the parser and, and if it gets to the end it says, yes, this is valid. Whereas here we have to have hooks so that we're going to construct this this binary object. Uh, the fact that we're uh, but originally they started with um, a Bison flex parser, uh, and this is uh, 
I think, about four or five times faster than the Bison Flex parser that, that, that they had started with. So it's pretty fast. OK, so basically, this originally, uh, if you were here last year and you went to their uh, talk last year, uh, they started off doing some work on a thing called Destin H store, which pretty much has the same semantics. By the time they got done, had the same semantics as JSON. It just uh, had uh, a different syntax. Um, and uh, a number of people expressed the view that what we really wanted was to move in the direction of JSON because it was something that, that the world wanted. And uh, after some uh, discussion and some cooperation, uh, we managed to uh, convert most of that work to use uh, 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 to JSON uh, B. And then uh, for a while, we actually wanted to, um, we, we were intending to have both nested JSON and JSON B, but then. Uh, close to the end of the process, some people said, no, we don't want to change HStore, we just want to leave it as it is. So we ended up basically with uh, JSONB as the binary tree-ish structure and HStore staying as it is now as a mapping of, flat mapping of strings to strings. So here's who did what. Uh, the original work was basically done by Oleg and Theodore and Alexander provided a whole lot of support for uh, um, some fast indexing. Then the, a lot of the adaptation work was done by, uh, of the indexable operators particularly was done by Peter Gagan. And then most of the parser and the implementation of the JSON functions, which we'll get to in a second, and operators was done by me. So, Here's what's different with JSON. As I said, it's canonical. There is no white space or punctuation left in the binary representation. It's just gone. <coughs> there is only one value per object key. So each key is kept once. If, you, uh, if, your, if your input contains a key, twice the last one wins, uh, which is pretty much how most uh, JavaScript parsers uh, operate. Um, the key order is kind of quirky. It's done for speed purposes. Uh, basically, we store, um, store the keys by, uh, first off by length and then by bitewise comparison. That means that when you're looking up a key in an object, you only ever have to compare a string of the same length as the key you're looking up. And you can just skip along until you find the keys of that length. Uh, so that happens pretty fast. But it do, as I say, it does make it look a bit odd. So, operators. JSONB has the same operators as, uh, as uh, JSON, and they have the same semantics. Uh, except, of course, where, they return, where the JSON operators return JSON, the JSONB operators return JSONB. It also has standard equality and inequality operators, which JSON does not have. And doesn't have because it's not quite clear what equality actually means with JSON. Um, but since we, since we have a canonical form for uh, JSONB, we do have these operators. Most of the, as I discovered the other day, most of these operators are not currently documented. So one of the things I'll have to do when I get home is add that documentation. What uh, are the semantics of things like less than and greater than? I'm going to come to that. Okay. Yep. Um, but I mean, the, one of the things that that does let you do is it lets you do things like distinct operations, which you just can't do, and union operations and so on. But yeah, we'll come to, we'll, we'll come to that. And it has these operations which are supported in, uh, most of which are supported in the, um, uh, the new ops classes uh, for, for Jin. This first operator means that the thing on the left contains 
the thing on the right. The second operator means that the thing on the left is contained by the thing on the right. And the, these operators are about existence of keys or values. So the first one says, does this key exist? The second one says, do any of these keys, this takes an, an array of values and says, do any of these keys or values exist? And this last one says, do all of them exist? So, here's, here's what the comparison means. Any object is greater than any array, which is greater than any Boolean value, which is greater than a number, greater than a string, greater than a null. If an object, ha an object with more pairs is greater than an object with less pairs, similarly for an array element, then <coughs> keys, keys and values are compared pairwise if, if the uh, number of elements are the same. Uh, How about numbers and strings? Numbers and strings, if, if, yeah, are compared. Um, yeah, we're using, we use numeric comparison and lexical comparison on the strings. Um, only on keys, I think. Um, I have to, I have to check that. It may not even be on keys. No, uh, there's certainly no. I think most of the comparisons are low color wear. Peter and I had a little. Um, yeah, we had to do some adjustment on that. Yeah. It's not ECMA standard ordering, but I believe that there are some problems with ECMA standard ordering because it may not be uh, entirely transitive, which is kind of undesirable when you're doing ordering operations in a database. <coughs> um, it's not a very, in, it's not a very uh, intuitive ordering, and for the most part, you're probably not going to want it all that much. But if you do something like a group by, you might wonder why things come out in a particular order, and that's why they will come out in a particular order. And again, it's because it's, it, it, it's extremely efficient. <clears throat> in, you know, in most cases, we're actually not having to compare elements at all. We're simply comparing, uh, you know, unless unless the structures match exactly. <coughs> okay, so JSONB also has all the same functions as all the same processing functions. So by processing functions, I mean functions that take JSON as an argument and give you back something, which might, might be JSON as well. Except the only difference is that the function names for JSON B start with JSON B underscore instead of JSON underscore. But it doesn't have any of the JSON creation functions. As we talked about, you can cast it to JSON B, but uh, we, can, you know, we can certainly look at um, extending those. It would not be very difficult at all to extend those to, uh, uh, to work in 9.5. And indexing. And I'm actually not going to talk terribly much about indexing because uh, it was, uh, A, I'm running out of time, and B, it was covered in, in, uh, in the talk yesterday. But essentially, uh, what we have is uh, there are two ops classes for gen indexes. Uh, the default class supports, contains, and all the exists operators. And the non-default ops, ops class, uh, which is called JSONB path ops, only supports the contains operator. The difference uh, is, as you, you would have seen at, uh, at the talk yesterday, that this index is, if, if, you, if you use this ops class, uh, because you only need to use the contains operator, uh, it's a heck of a lot faster, and the index is a heck of a lot smaller.
So, <coughs> somebody asked about you know keys further down inside the document. I think it's you, John. Basically, at the moment, what you have to, what you have to do is to tr uh, look at things like uh, you can either use contains and then some object uh, with with a path, or you can use you can index a sub document and and uh, uh, this is uh, a this is more or less how you would index a sub document if you're only interested in looking up authors in, on books or you want a, an index specifically on that then you would all index the sub document of authors so you're using the get operator there and then you're going to use that expression in your query and it will uh, it will pull that up Yeah, yeah. But the the uh, the vodka stuff is coming, and that's that's also looking uh, pretty cool. And and you're go it's going to make a, a lot of these things a lot nicer. You're going to be able to uh, dig into the documents a lot more. Okay, so here's the question: When do you use JSON? I mean, I would have said. Most, you know, use JSON B pretty much all the time. Um, but there are certainly some arguments, and, and certainly uh, at least one of our users uh, objected strenuously to, uh, uh, to us uh, even suggesting that. Um, and he, you know, pretty much his use case relies on things like preservation of key order. Uh, allowing duplicate keys and so on. Um, my view is that any application that relies on that is broken by design. Um, but that's, you know, that's a, a kind of a matter of opinion. But basically, unless, I, let's put it this way, unless you've got a good reason for not using JSONB, use JSONB. That would be my advice. Um, it's 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 going to be the future. It's going to, it's what's going to let us, um, you know, at least give the MongoDB developers a few sleepless nights. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and it's going to you know it's going to you know it's going to make uh, Postgres uh, sort of uh, sexy again. Um, <laughs> okay, so here's 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 uh, the future uh, that I see more indexing operations with the vodka stuff. I think more the more we use it, with the more requirements are going to um, to emerge. But I mean, already the thing that with the the query language that uh, Oleg and Theodore have have implemented uh, that's uh, pretty much an equivalent of text search query. Um, they're going to be able to index that. It's just going to make uh, make this uh, uh, pretty awesome. Um, <clears throat> the the big thing we're missing, you can't uh, take a piece of JSON and easily mangle it to delete a field or add a field or change the value of a field or something like that or an element. That will be in 9.5. I can pretty much promise you that. Um, here's, here's the thing, don't use JSON or JSONB to store huge, huge documents. Don't put your, you know, uh, uh, well, <laughs> I mean, this is not, this is not, this is not going to scale either. This is the, this is the trouble. I, I mean, I, How big are they? They're pretty big, like five, twelve k each. Oh, that's not very big. <laughs> well, that's big because they're kind of rebuilding, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, that's. I mean, I mean, a few, a few megabytes is not is not. 
so, so much a big deal. I mean, I'm talking about, you know, if you don't try and store your 100 gigabyte log file in a single JSON datum. So that's pretty much what I'm saying, okay? Um, because if you want to, if, particularly if you ever want to change it, then you have to, you know, as is true with byte A and so on, you have to rewrite the whole datum and it gets, it gets old really quickly. So that, that is a problem that we actually need to address is how we can actually possibly deal with uh, managing large datums in pieces. But that's kind, that's kind of a big subject that's, kind of, that's a bit beyond uh, the scope here. I'll just throw it out as something that sort of make, makes me wake up in the middle of the night and thinking, I wish I had a way of doing that. Yeah. Yes. 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 And I've had I've had similar thoughts. Yes. And and you might say, well, we'll we'll chunk it if if the inner piece you know you might chop it up into uh, along logical JSON boundaries, and and say, well, we'll allow the inner piece to get this big before we start chunking it or stuff like that. Um. Okay, we want to have some, uh, uh, who's going to the unconference? Quite a lot of you, okay. Uh, one of the things that uh, we're discussing, uh, that I've been discussing a little bit with uh, Oleg, uh, uh, is uh, that we need some better statistics. We don't really have any statistics on, on uh, JSON J or JSONB. We need, to, we need to work out how we can do that. We need to work out how we can get better support in the planner for these uh, uh, rich data types. Uh, and so we're proposing to have a session on that uh, tomorrow. Um, and I don't know if there are any other um, things you think we ought to raise. No. OK. So I'm done. If there are, we're just, we are pretty much out of time. But um, if there are any questions. Uh, it will be maintained, but I don't think you're going to see any new development because this is where this is this is where the development is going to be. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it, it currently has a few operators, particularly along the lines of the things that I was saying we need to get into 9.5 with um, uh, uh, you know, set and delete functions uh, that we don't have for JSON. So if you need those currently, stick with HStore. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Anything else? Okay, well, thank you.